on how they plan to do that. Thank you very much, Trevor. I'm joined here by, by Nif to talk about that victory. Now, that was a very, 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 very long game. Uh, you guys had four dragons, and then Gambit had four dragons after those four dragons. How did you lose the lead, and then how did you get it again all the w at the very end? Well, I think that we, how we got the lead is just I roamed a lot this game, so we got a lot of pickoffs. So that kept us in the game at the early game, but then we made some mistakes in the mid game where we got flanked by Ken. And I think that was just the big story of the game, that we got flanked every, every five minutes the TP was up, he just TP'd our back and we weren't able to, to deny that, and that came, made them come back. Well, you've had an extremely bumpy split, a lot of roster changes as well, you coming back into the team. Uh, the last time you played a super long game, you also won it against SK. Is that the way you're going to win games from here on out? I hope not. I hope that the game's going to be a bit cleaner. Um, we're still doing a lot of mistakes. Obviously, there's improvement, as you can see, but I would really wish to not play like the old CLGSU. Okay, so uh, now you're tied up with Rocket, Gambit, and Giants. Which of those teams do you think you can outperform as we get into the tiebreakers or potential tiebreakers? I think we can win against all teams. I think only like the top four is maybe equal or probably stronger. But I think although against other teams, I think we have really good chance, chances right now. And tomorrow we play against SK as well. And when we win, then I think we make it to playoffs. Well, best of luck, Nif. Thank you for taking the time to talk to me. We're going to throw it over to the Alistair to close out the day. Pew! <laughs> Thank you so much, Pulsa. Hey, buddy. It's, uh, it's buddy. all right. We're back. Hey. The game's over. All right. All right. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, by the way, I want to pick in on what uh, Nif just said. When we win versus SK tomorrow, we'll probably be in playoffs. I don't know how to react to that after that game. I don't know how to react to anything after that game. It was uh, quite peculiar. This is the first time I've seen Poke against Poke, and I'm like, we're in for a long one, and then we see four dragons to none. And I'm so happy, because this game will eventually end. And I was wrong, yet again. And it was, yeah, a bit of a throw fist back and forth, but eventually, Elements played to their strengths, which is the ultimate late game, and they won. Yeah, I, I was so sure that Elements was going to win that after I had four drakes and the Kogma and of course the lead, like I just felt it's impossible to lose. And then Coward Shard just takes on the carry pants and yeah. <laughs> like kills Frogan four times with the TP and it's like, wow, uh, Kenneth has TP. Uh, I wonder what is he going to do, you know, and he just TP'd every time and killed Frogan and then I was so sure Gambit would win <laughs> and then Elements won. Yeah, in terms of like actual analysis for this game, what actually disappointed me in Elements is the, the lack of flexibility. It's okay, you know, fool me once, fool me twice, you know, the saying goes further, but Elements got <laughs> fooled five times, and they stopped warding their flanks. I mean, this is the only counter Gambit had in their playbook. It wasn't like a variety of plays. It was literally teleport behind them, slicing Maelstrom, press R. That was it. Just flank, uh, flank your wards, ward your flanks, <laughs> and buy distortion boots and Froggen. The only reason he got home guards is so he could run out of the base quicker every time he died. And so he just buys distortion boots and he just flash for three minutes and then Elements can set up plays. Every time Gambit got a successful play, they bought five minutes in the game because Froggen wanted to wait for his flash. That could have been reduced to three minutes and this game could have been sped up exponentially to prevent certain analysts from falling asleep at our desk here. So definitely would have liked to see that a little more. Yeah, I also would have liked to see Michaels on Trash or yep. whoever. I think it would have helped a lot. Like sometimes Strongen was even dying with Flash Up if you just have that Michaels, Michaels, Kogma, Kogma Flash Out and then you win. Yeah. yeah. Is a, does a game like this really come down to certain item choices? I know we were discussing a bit about Banner of Command and how it ended up putting the waves in the favor of elements. Uh, both sides use yeah. Banner very well eventually. The downside of Banner of Command is that you can't use it on those uh, super minions created when you have an inhibitor down, so then you actually resort to the inferior version when you buff the caster creeps. But yeah, good side wave management uh, with Banner of Command for both these teams, but I definitely agree with Cyanide here. Mikael's was much more needed later. It's even like, why do you need Righteous Glory? These comms don't really want to run into each other all that much. Righteous Glory has no defensive capabilities in terms of getting Froggen away. I mean, it's harsh, but... If elements do make the tiebreak and they do make playoffs, they will need to learn how to adapt quicker than they did this game or they'll just get torn apart in the best of five. Which we have been saying actually for a couple of weeks already. Quick maybe on Gamut, obviously playing with Moops in there, who honestly held his own pretty well, but in a game like this or? Yeah, there was there was a tweet uh, online that I was going to steal. Tweet online? Yeah, wow. somebody said, yes, that's how tweets work, shop. <laughs> That's what I'm implying. <laughs> it's about to make my point as I get interrupted here. But yeah, in the wake of Forgiven not being able to uh, play, 
Jesus Christ, Chucks. Not being able to play, uh, the, the void had to be filled by getting two AD carries, you know, one in the mid lane, one in the bot lane. And that's indeed what somebody tweeted. Now my joke is ruined. Thank you very much, yeah. Chucks. You I quote hope your you're own happy. tweets, you quote other people's tweets. At least you gave them credit this time around. Anyway, the playoffs are on the line on our stage, and it all comes down to this week, though. In the Fantasy LCS, your last matchup will also be a little easier if you have Yellow Star in your lineup. He went big as support Trundle today. 19 assists, picking up a total of 32.5. Fantasy points. I mean, I didn't think I'd love to see the day that the Trundle support would win the fantasy rankings. No comment at all? Yeah, no comment. Are you salty with me? <laughs> <laughs> now nah, he did actually play really well. And this is this right here, that exchange right at the end of that VOD, well, was just so good to see that this is what Fnatic does. Whenever somebody makes a mistake, somebody else catches catches up with them and just and, like removes that is, or swipes it clean. And that, that's what Yellowstar did right here. Had some good roams. Got that early... Um, Moby Boots and Sightstone too, and allowed him to snowball. And then at, at that point, when Yellow Star has Moby Boots and Sightstone, it doesn't matter what champion he's playing. He could be playing Master Yi support, and it will work. He can ward everywhere as long as he gets that vision and the shot calling. And it's so paramount to, to Fnatic structure in terms of how they methodically close out the games. The only thing you have to wait for, yeah, perhaps the early game, but they have been experimenting lately. So I, for playoffs, I imagine it'll be even better. Yeah, and still undefeated there, Fnatic. A ton of stuff happened today. And for a look at the standings and what all of it means for the summer playoffs, we're going to pew it over to Stress and Quickshot.